Greetings, this is Jared Love, and in this video I'm going to be going over what I'm calling smart pick walking. And I'm using this in conjunction with the controller node, so if you haven't actually watched my video on doing the controller node setup for pick walking, I've got a four part tutorial series that you can take a look at. So if you have watched it, you'll notice this guy is pretty, pretty familiar to you. So I added these FK uh, clavicle controls. And I went ahead and did the tag as controller and I parented them in with a buffer, a double buffer in between them so that they could be isolated pick walking between them. And I parented them into the chest. So it's the children zero is going up to the spine like before. I shifted the FK and IK arms down and I sandwiched in the clavicles to go into that children one. And you'll notice that I don't have any parent outgoing connections for the FK arms and the IK arms down here. So I'm basically going to be taking care of that up and down pick walking with this override for custom pick walking rather than using the parenting system of the controller nodes. So just to show you what it's doing, I've got this FK IK attribute here. So zero would be FK one would be IK. And if I've got this guy selected and I go down, you see it's going into the FK arm. But if I take this guy and go to one, and then if I grab that clavicle again and go down, now I'm in the IK arm. So it's using this attribute here to determine which down it's going to go into. And both of these guys, this IK arm and the FK arm, I've done the override for the up so that regardless of which one you've got selected, they'll go up into this clavicle. And there's a similar setup for the fingers. So if I go down into them and go up, I select the IK control, and that's because I'm in IK mode. And then if I go down into FK mode, if I go down into the fingers and go up, now I'm in the FK hand. I didn't need to override the down for either of those because I already have the grouping system put together with the, the fingers and both the FK and IK controls are going in as the parents. So both of them will go down. And if you remember from the videos before, about the pick walking. I added in a comment below showing that this was actually not very stable using the multiple parent thing. So if you look here on this one, the, the right side is going to my FK control and the left side is using the IK control as the one that it would go up into if you push the up arrow. And I, it's just a random thing. Whenever I opened Maya, it, it was always setting it back to that regardless of how I reconnected them to get it to it the way I wanted, which is unfortunate. So, but we're going to look at the node network here. So, so this is the, the right side and this is the left side. We're just going to look at one and I'm going to go ahead and open up all of these. So just to take a look at the clavicle and the FK arm and IK arm. So I've got this pick walk down message attribute that I've added, which is a multi attribute. And the way I added it, so I select my clavicle controls and then I did the pick walk down section here, which is adding this message attribute pick called pick walk down and it's a multi attribute, which is what gives us these indices. And then I also added this pick walk down index attribute and it's just an integer. And I use the message attributes instead of just using a string attribute and typing this into those fields because if you're going to import this character into a scene and you want a namespace, then using the connections, you won't have to factor that in to your pick walking code to get it to work. So you can see here the, the zero index for the pick walk down is going up here into my FK and the one index is going to the IK. And the only other thing is that this FK attribute, which is on the hand, the FK IK switch, is plugging into this pick walk down index. So 
<clears throat> the fingers are actually also very similar. It's it's just the other direction. So again, you have this this hand plugging into the pick walk up index, and then the message attribute of your two controls, so your FK and your IK, are plugging into the corresponding zero or one, depending on which it is. So this is the FK plugging into zero on all of these, and the IK hand is plugging into the one on all of them. So it's pretty simple in that regard. And now I, I did this on the actual hand control node rather than the controllers so that I didn't have to find its controller node and then get the information and then go to those controller nodes and then find their actual controls. So that's like two extra steps to, to go through. But if the controller nodes actually did that inherently, you wouldn't actually need to connect all the fingers themselves because if we look at this again, you know, the if this controller node had the override up and down, it would just have the these two, the FK and IK, connected into it, into the 0 and 1. And so then if you pick walked up from any of these, it would feed in here and say, oh, okay, I'm going into the 0 or the 1, depending on what your FK, IK switch attribute is set to. So that would simplify it. Really hope Maya adds that in. So the only other thing you really need to do is you need to go in and set up a new hotkey. So if I go in here to the hotkey editor, and by default, your pickwalk controls are going to be using Maya's default pickwalk left or right or up or down, uh, which you can see here. Now I've gone ahead and updated it for the up and down in this case. So what you would do is you would create a custom script. So if we just look at one of these, what it's going to do is it's going to try to run this code, and then if it fails anywhere, it's going to do the default pick walking command that Maya has. So looking at this, what it's doing is I'm getting the first node that's selected, and I'm only doing one node because doing multiple adds a bunch of extra complexity it's just a simple case for now. If I want to in the future, I could look into it. But then what it does is it's getting the pick walk up index attribute, finding that value, and then it's listing the connections of the corresponding pick walk up index attribute, and then selecting that node that's there. So again, if any of this fails, it uses the default pick walking. So, oh yeah, one thing you do need to make sure of, if you don't have Maya commands or Maya.mel imported, then this is going to fail. So you could either add in the Maya, import Maya.commands as MC, add that in here, and then the import Maya.mel as MM, imp uh, put that in here, or you could put it into a user setup, so I've got a Python one here that just has those lines in it, and this is the Mel version, which I had to make because the the Mel one automatically sources, the Python one is supposed to, but it doesn't seem like it does all the time, so I put this guy in here, and I'll just show you what it's doing. And this is just basically kicking my in the head to say, hey, load the user setup Python version. So if you didn't want to bother with that, you could actually put into this user setup script, which is in the documents, Maya, your version of Maya scripts, at least on Windows. I'm not 100% sure where it is on Linux and Mac, but it would be in a similar location, wherever the Maya directories are. So what this is doing is it's deferring this eval so that it'll run after Maya has actually loaded and it's calling a Python script which is importing this user setup and it's basically just running this as it imports it. So if you didn't want to have that Python file you could copy this line and instead of import user setup you would just have this line there and then you could copy it again and put in your 
my ML in that one. And so that's going to make it to where it sources them once Maya is loaded, so you don't actually have to do that in your script editor by yourself anymore anyway. Which is kind of nice, a little, little shorthand, so you don't have to bother. Okay, so yeah, once you got those there, then you have this this pick walking thing. So on the controls, any control that actually has this up and down in it, you can see this one doesn't. It if it has the attributes in there, it's going to run that custom hotkey. If it doesn't, like on this guy, it's just going to use the default Maya pick walking. And if you've set it up with your controller nodes, then you've got you know 90% of what you need there. So it's pretty cool. I hope you found that helpful, and have a blessed day.